Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part three of my tier list. Um, today, first, first episode, we went through the first bunch of the mainline games and then the second part, we went through the other bits of the mainline games and today we are going through the rest and the best, which is the last game that I'll do. Um, to kick things off, we've got Resident Evil Gaiden. Now, this is one I haven't personally played. I've seen, I've seen people play it. I've seen gameplay footage of it and stuff. So, um, this is kind of a standalone game because I think I'm pretty sure like characters die and stuff like that. It's just its own uh, story. It wasn't very popular, as far as I'm aware. Um, but it's 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 still a decent game. Uh, it's average, you know. It it was a Game Boy Color game. What more do you want from it? Um, I haven't really got like a ton to say about it, as I said, because I haven't really played it. But I like the idea. Um, there is a game. I think I played the demo of it. Um, which should be released. Uh, which kind of took. The Resident Evil Gaiden idea, but obviously modernised it, and that's a really good demo. So you should go and check that out. I'll before the end of the video, I will go and find out what that's called. Actually, I'll do it right now. So just give me a second. I'll be right back. I just went back and checked, it and it checked, it and it is called "You Will Die Here Tonight." I've got the demo up. Part 1 and Part 2, Part 2 at the end just really frustrated me so I didn't end up finishing it. But it's basically a modernised version of Gaiden. And it's very good. Like Gaiden, it, it's a decent game but I don't think... I, I think I'll put it behind 6. Actually I'll put it behind Village. Because I don't think it's, it's not out of this world, it's just is what it is. Uh, and then we've got Resident Evil Survivor, or Biohazard Gun Survivor. Um, it, uh, it's a first person one where you move around and then you move the cursor to shoot the zombies. Um, it was a it was the first like gun based like light gun type game. Um, I like it. I think it's very good. Uh, obviously. It, Oh, for God's sake, go away. Um, it, it's not Raccoon City, but it's a a village, village or a town that's been affected by Umbrella, and obviously the virus has got out and stuff like that. Um, you basically, you, you, you survive a plane crash, and you've got amnesia, and you forget who you are, and you're going around trying to get off this island... And figure out, figure out what is going on. Um, yeah, it's a it's a middle of the road game. It's it's not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, I I enjoy playing it. Um, you kind of go through and you uh, it's got the cheesy voice acting and stuff like that. So that's always fun to listen to. I would give it a recommendation. I think people should go and play it. Um, but as for as for on the tier list, um, it's just better than Gaiden. But again, the only thing that really puts it above six is the fact that it's an old school classic Resident Evil game. Um, and then we move on to Resident Evil Gun Survivor. Is it Resident Evil Gun Survivor or Resident Evil Survivor Two? I think. Um, yeah, this one is. A rehash of Code Veronica. I'm not going to go too into too much detail with it. It's eh. it's one of them. I'm just gonna. I'll just put it behind Gaiden. I don't think it's the best, but you know it retells a story and it's it's kind of a um, a retelling reimagining of Code Veronica rather than an actual real entry. It's difficult to get hold of. I don't think people really played it, and I think it was, it was kind of the end of them bringing the, 
uh, the light gun games to consoles. I just don't think it it really transla- translated very well. So yeah, C tier it is. Um, actually, I'm moving them down into D tier. Cause I feel like that that they aren't as good as them. But I feel, I feel like they should be in their own team. Me moving things around again. I do apologise. Um, and then we go to Resident Evil Revelations. I love Revelations. I oh, it's one of my favourite. I got it. It first came out on the Nintendo DS. If people uh, remember. The revelation, the original revelations release. It's it has gone to consoles and stuff now. Um, it's a oh, it's a very good game. I enjoy it. Um, you you play as oh it's it's Jill. I can't remember the other bloke's name. <laughs> what do you play as, Chris? I know you play as Jill and Chris. No, you play uh, Jill. Jill is the main one. Chris is kind of the secondary one. Um, it's basically you get a dis- distress signal. You go to a ship, but it's like a big grand ship, and uh, it's got some weird enemies in it. The ones that shoot stuff at you, and it doesn't have zombies. I can oh, I don't know how to describe them. They're kind of like, um, you know Resident Evil 4, the ones with the spikes? I forgot what they're called. They're like regenerators or something like that. They kind of look like that, and they're kind of like floppy, weird-looking things with big, long tongues. And they, when they die, they go into pools, and you have to scan them. And you get, like, scan them to get information, and you get, like, you're able to defeat them more easily and stuff. But, yeah, you basically, you're just going around a big ship... It could be cruise liner. Um, there is a bit of a backstory as well with a a company that built like they built like a big island, uh, like a new city, and it was like floating on the water. And then, obviously, you get your bio terrorists, and they unleash hunters and stuff on the island, and it kind of just destroys it. And you basically you're part of a company that you are. You're fighting these bioterrorists. Uh, as I said, it's got Chris in it as well because it's the classic. Jill goes off on this mission. They lose contact. She goes missing, and Chris is called in to go and like basically save her. Um, they do all meet up at the end and stuff like that. But it's it's it, 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 obviously it's a side story. It's a very interesting story. Um, I would recommend people go and play it. I very much enjoy it. Uh, so I'm going to put it up here in A tier. Uh, is it? It's better than three remake. Not better than five though. So we'll we'll give it there. Just at the back end of the A tier. As I said, I like them. Uh, I think they are doing a third one as well because there's obviously there's two and then the third one. So look out for that. Uh, and then we jump on to Resident Evil Revelations 2. Uh, Revelations 2, you play as my favourite character, Claire. Uh, you've got Claire and a girl called Moira. And Moira is Barry's daughter. Not Barry Burton from the original. Like You ain't, you ain't really heard of Barry or seen Barry or anything, but he's also playable in this. And Barry, he's with a little girl, I can't remember the little girl's name, but basically, she, your secondary characters kind of have powers, uh, like, they can help, they can help you in combat as well, not so much the little girl, but Moira can, um, she basically, she, you, you have to like, zo- you zoom in on little bits in the map and like the a light flickers and it's items that's kind of her power and the little girl she can see 
if you use her, she can see enemies through walls, and obviously she can like duck under little holes and go through and unlock doors and stuff like that. Um, yeah, basically, uh, Moira goes to work with Claire at the company she works at. I'm terrible with company names and stuff like that. You know, it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm just terrible at it. T- terrible remembering. Um, and this one, she goes to work and they get attacked and Moira and Claire get kidnapped. And then you go in through the game and then Barry, because his daughter's got kidnapped, he takes up his uh, revolver and goes on the hunt for her and he kind of retraces your steps. Uh, it's not as good as the first one, but it's a pretty decent game. I would probably put it in... Probably just put it behind 8 in C tier. I don't think I can really put it any higher than that because it's decent, but it's not the best. Uh, and then we are moving on. And we are moving on to Resident Evil Outbreak. Now, Outbreak, Raccoon City. Um, this one, you've got like a whole bunch of characters that you pick. And uh, in the scenarios, I think there's up to like... There's like three or four in different scenarios. It's it's an online. You could play it online with other people, um, and you basically got to get out of Raccoon City. You pick which character you want, and you go through. But the thing is, you are yeah, you're on a timer because you are infected, and if the timer reaches a hundred, it's well, it's not so much a timer, but kind of like a percentage, and if it reaches hundred you turn into a zombie and you can attack your other teammate obviously if you're playing on your own it's kind of game over but yeah you can turn into a zombie and attack your friends Um, it's one of them a lot of people are calling out for a remake Uh, it is a very enjoyable game you got, and you kind of got you got your different scenarios and you can pick different characters for each scenario I think there's four scenarios in the game and it's like ones in Raccoon City, ones uh, in a lab, and I can't I can't remember the other two offhand, but I think it's a very it's a very good concept, and like I don't see why they didn't bring that back instead of making multiplayer games. You could just have done right making a multiplayer game. It's going to be Resident Evil Outbreak. People want a remake of it because it was very popular. Um, and kind of slot it in like that. Um, but they just haven't. A lot of people are clamoring, as I said, are clamoring for a remake along with Code Veronica. And it's kind of the two that, if they do make remakes, they should be next in line. Um, I'm going to push it up here. Uh, I'm going to put it just above three. Actually, no, I'm going to put it behind three. Uh, Resident Evil Outbreak File 2. This is one I have no knowledge of. Um, I haven't played this one. I haven't watched it be played. I mean, I didn't even know until like recent, a couple of years ago when I really got into Resident Evil that they did a second one. I remember the original one because I had it. Um, but this one I've got no knowledge of, so I can't really talk on it. Um, I... <sighs> Yeah, I can't really talk on it, so I'm kind of inclined to just leave it out, because at least the others I kind of have experience with. It's the only one, apart from Gaiden, that I haven't actually played. Uh, I'll I'll probably just put it... I'll just put it there, because I don't really know. I bet it's not... I highly doubt it's the worst game in the series... So I'm going to kind of leave it there. Um, I'm at, Instead of jumping to these, I'm actually going to jump to Resident Evil 3 Mercenaries, which I'm going to put in E straight away. It was just Mercenaries mode. It was on the DS. It wasn't that great. It didn't sell much. No, no one's really asking for a, a sequel of it or it to be remade or anything, so I'm just whacking it in E. Um, these two I'm going to kind of lump together you've got the Umbrella Chronicles and the Dark Side Chronicles 
which are basically it plays through the original games uh they're light gun ones so you're on rails and you go around and you've they're on the wing and you've got your Wii remote and you point at the screen and you shoot different ones um they were fun games they were kind of they tried to bring back the whole light gun thing and it I just don't think it really worked as well as I'd hoped it wasn't really as popular and then like obviously once you get past the Wii there's no apart from the Switch now which they could probably bring them back for the Switch they did it with House of Dead and stuff like that you just kind of you know point at the screen so I feel like they could do it but I don't think they will I don't think I think they've kind of left the whole light gun thing behind. They are they are good games. They're fun games. As I said, I'm lumping them together. I think they're better than Gun Survivor and Revelations 2. I enjoy them more than that. So I'll probably just put them there, just behind 8. I don't know, actually. I'm going to put 8 there. Because I think they're more... They're Resident Evil. You know they're Resident Evil. You could play through them and you would know that you are playing a Resident Evil game. And I feel like with obviously 8, you can't really do that. Um, Then we've got Resident Evil Dead Aim. Now this one, it kind of mixed... It was kind of Resident Evil Gaiden, but better graphics. Uh, Again, it's got really, really pants terrible voice acting um and you you can you kind of run around and then when you want to shoot something you have to stop and aim and stuff and do it that way it's kind of like it's it's like an international incident on a boat type thing again you know they always seem to hash out that story um Oh, is it? it's, a, it's another thing I'm going to have to look up because his name is just ridiculous. It's it's like a really it's a like a really bad, a really bad game, and it makes me laugh. Um. Oh, where where is it? Uh. There we go. Uh. Diddle-diddle-diddle. Uh. Plot. Oh, where's his name? Bruce McGiven. It's like, come on, you couldn't come up with a better name than that. And you kind of, you've your agency's there, and I think, I think there was, I think she's, oh, she's Chinese, I think. And she's, and then they reluctantly team up together to defeat this evil. You know, it's it's better than them. It's not as good as six, so I'll kind of put it in the D tier. Um, and then we move on to Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Now this one, you go back to Raccoon City, obviously. Uh, this is another one of those, uh, it's not a canon story. Uh, you go in as like a, you go in as like a, uh, you know, Hunk's team. Like, I forgot to see, names again. And you go in, you kind of like, you go in through... Um, I think it's before, you know and you know obviously they go in to, they, to get the virus from William Birkin. Um, oh, it's another thing I'm gonna have to Google because it's gonna bug me otherwise. Uh, Operation Raccoon City. There we go. Yeah, it's a like a third person shooter. It is very action orientated. Uh, but at least this one, it's got zombies, and you come across tyrants and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, a group of para- the game follows a group of elite paramilitary, private military contractors for Umbrella Corporation during the zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. Uh, yeah, you go in and you meet up with Hunk, and their mission is to assist the Alpha team in stopping Dr. Birkin from handing over his T-virus research to the US military and retrieve the G virus. So yeah, it's kind of it's it's slotted into uh Resident Evil 2. 
it's kind of like, oh, what what was what was happening while Birkin was doing all this type deals? It's a very fun game. I like it because obviously it's zombies and you come you do come you do have to kill the humans and stuff like that. And you're just trying to get the G virus. Uh, and stop, basically stop Birkin, which obviously, as we know, if you've played Resident Evil Two, does not work. Um, I'd place it up here. Uh, I'll place it just beyond Resident Evil Four in the B tier. It's a very good game. It's very enjoyable. If you enjoy it, then it is something that you should definitely look into. If you don't enjoy it. I feel like it's more Resident Evil than other games. So, but obviously that's, you know, it's, it's people's personal opinions, isn't it? Um, and we move on to Umbrella Core. Now, straight away, F tier. It is the worst of the worst of Resident Evil games. It was their foray into mu- like a multiplayer game. You can, I mean, you can still buy it now on Steam. Like people don't play it. It didn't sell very well. It wasn't. It was kind of Operation Raccoon City multiplayer, and you could you could play as like your favourite characters and stuff like that. And it's it's just it's really bad. It was just not what Resident Evil fans wanted. And I know I said I wasn't doing. You know, like the other multiplayer games, but. <laughs> This one kind of needs to be talked about because, as meh, as the other multiplayer ones, this one is just bad. It is F tier. It's on its own. There is no game that is as bad as it. It is brutally unplayable to a point where like I wouldn't even like I've seen obviously people still do it for like videos and stuff like that on YouTube, but just no, just do not bother with it. Don't go anywhere near it. Now, part three is nearly at an end. But first off, we have to talk about a little game called Resident Evil Code Veronica X. If you want to put the X on it. Uh, As you can tell by the picture, you play as Claire and that is Chris. It is a it is a game that's split into two halves. Basically, Claire is on a mission to find Chris. After obviously going to Raccoon City and to Chris isn't there and she's trying to find him, basically. And she ends up... You start the game, she ends up in a prison cell, unconscious, and she wakes up on this island... Um, it is believed that she's gone there to kind of bring the island down because it's an umbrella island. You know, all the all the original ones are really heavy. Umbrella is the enemy. We've got to get umbrella. Um, she wakes up. She gets out of the cell. There's a there's a man there again. Names can't remember his name. Um, and then when she goes topside. She's walking around, she's like, where the hell am I? What is going on? And then zombies appear. And she's like, oh crap, this again. Now, there are, there's more than one antagonist. Um, They bring back Wesker. Which Wesker is a great enemy, but he's kind of I feel like he's a bit shoehorned in there. He's not meant to be there. Um and then you've got Alfred and Alicia Ashcroft. Ashcroft Back back to the Googling. Oh I just want to get things right because like if people are interested in playing it I kind of want to get things right, and I don't want to be like using completely wrong names. The the biggest issue, sorry, before I carry on with this one, is Dreamcast, PlayStation Two, GameCube, PS Three, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. You can get 
you can get the 360 version on the Xbox and there is a version of it on PlayStation as well because I've got it on my PS4 but outside of that it's the only game that like the only popular game that you can't get on PC and they kind of haven't they've just kind of like ported it up and ported it up they haven't really done anything with it it's one of the ones that like it's you know come on it's supposed to be we we want a remake of it and you're not giving it us it's like it's the next pe- next one in line like people wanted a Code Veronica remake before they wanted 2 and 3 um, basically as well this it was supposed to be designed as Resident Evil 3 this was this one was supposed to be Resident Evil 3 but it became a spin off because i think PlayStation had that PlayStation had an exclusivity for the mainline games and because they were going to put 3 on was it was it the GameCube No, the Dreamcast, sorry, not the GameCube, it was the Dreamcast. Um, Resident Evil 3 was meant to be the spin-off, but they wanted a mainline version, so... Because they were making Resident Evil 3, like, the one we know now, for the PlayStation, and Code Veronica was for the Dreamcast, they just decided that, oh, we're just going to... We're going to give the spin-off the Resident Evil 3 moniker, and we're going to give... Co- uh, Code Veronica, we're going to give that the uh, the Code Veronica name. Uh, I just want to do do, 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 Alfred and Alexia. That's it. Yeah, Alexia Ashford, not Ashcroft. I don't know where we got Ashcroft from. Yeah, but they're kind of the main antagonists of the game uh, you've got Alfred's the one that's more you know like getting stuff done he believes that Claire came to the island to destroy the island and release the virus and ruin everything they've got their own they've, that, the Ashford's have even got their own like, big mansion and stuff they were like high ranking in Umbrella Um and then obviously you're playing through and you get to meet another annoying character called Steve. He's kind of some whiny, douchey character, <laughs> which always makes me laugh. He's just, he's just really annoying. Um, but he's not annoying to that. He's not Ashley annoying. Ashley is by, by far the most annoying character. Um, and then, basically. Claire's just trying to get off this island because she can't, she she was started out she was looking for a brother and it doesn't work out for her and then when you it's got it's got it's a game of two halves you get to a point where it cuts off and then Chris shows up on the island because he's in a bizarre twist of fate he's looking for Claire and then you get to play Chris for a bit throughout the island and it, it is kind of two different games and then obviously there's the inevitable meet up and they're like oh oh you're alive and then they get off the island safely obviously because they're in <laughs> subs- subsequent games um, there is a big spoiler so if you don't want to hear what the big spoiler is um mute the video or skip ahead I will give a big double thumbs up and you can listen Um, because it's my favourite game and I don't want to spoil it for people Uh, I'll start now it turns out that um, Alexia died when I think when they were little and Alfred just like because they were like twins they were in sync they loved each other so much um, he kind of can't accept it 
and it it's kind of the uh, it kind of it's kind of the Norman Bates thing, um, where like they've got this big mansion on the top of a hill, this big house, and he, he kind of he dresses up as a. Um, I don't think he realizes that he is dressing up as her. I think it's just like mentally he's just gone. Um, and there's a point where like they pull the wig off and he looks in the mirror and he's like in shock and he's like, oh my god, I, I, I'm not Alexia. And he kind of loses his mind, he ends up dying. But what he's doing is he cloned his sister and she kind of becomes this like big tyrant, like really all powerful character. Um, and yeah, obviously, like they you shoehorn Wesker in, uh. Which is a bit annoying, because like Wesker's a really good character, and just introduce him at the beginning, have him working with Alfred, to kind of. You know, build Umbrella up back to its former glory, and then, it would work well. But yeah, obviously that's the kind of little twist in the tale, that. Alfred, dresses up as Alexia. And then he ends up dying, and Alexia ends up taking over anyway. Now, I've got to give my big double thumbs up to bring people back in in case they've muted. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the crux of the story. Um, there is one annoying part of this game which you can fall prey to, is you can... Uh, you can uh, what's it? What is it? Is it stun lock? No, soft lock. That's it. You can soft lock yourself out of the game because there's a bit where you take off on a plane and you have to fight a tyrant in the hangar, the hangar bit. And if you don't have the bullets, and you, if you don't have the bullets or you don't have the grenade or even the bow flame rounds. It's difficult to defeat this thing because basically, it's kind of like the fight in RE2 remake with the Birkin, where you've got to swing the container around. But this one, there's a container at the back, and you've got this panel, and you have to press it, and it shoots out into the tyrant, and he holds it, and he holds on, and he kind of stays on the plane. And if you soft lock yourself out of it, and you don't have enough ammo, you can't you can't defeat him. Because you can shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. But then when you run out, if you've just got normal bow rounds or something like that, he's just going to come at you and kill you. And when you press the button to knock him off, he's not going to knock him off because you need him to, you need his health to go down. So if you've got loads of grenade rounds and you pump loads of grenade rounds into him and he's weakened, you can, you can knock him off first time. But if you don't have that option... He's just too strong and powerful and he's like the middle of the game and you'd have to start it all over again. And more than likely you're going to turn around and go, nah, I don't want to do that all that again. And I wouldn't blame you. Um, but yeah, Code Veronica is my favourite game. So, not in F tier, not in E tier, not in D, not in C, not in B, not in A. It's in S tier. And it's the first one there. So yeah, that is the end of my uh, tier review series. Um, I love Code Veronica. It's my favourite. I'm pretty happy with the order. I mean, I might, if I came back at another time and thought about it again, I might swap a few things around like I have throughout the videos. But this is it. It's Code Veronica. RE Remake, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Original RE, 7, 5, Revelations, 3 Remake, 2, 4 Remake, 3 Original, Outbreak 0, 4 Original, Operation Raccoon City, The Chronicles Saga, then 8, Revelations 2, Survivor, 6, Dead Aim, Gaiden, Gun Survivor 2, Outbreak File 2, which again I haven't played so 
that's one of the ones that I'm really unsure on. Uh, Mercenaries 3D and the worst game is Umbrella Corps. I, I invite you and I welcome you to play all of the titles in the series. Obviously Umbrella Corps, I'd leave that out because it's kind of a dead game. And Mercenaries, I don't even know. It's probably, probably difficult to get your hands on a copy. Um, obviously I recommend them all. I love the series. But yeah, that is the end of the video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give me a big follow. Um, like, comment. Give me... Give, put your list in the comments below. Tell me what... Or... Tell me what your favourite game is and your least favourite game. Tell me if you think I'm wrong on a game. Uh, and give me a reasons why I'm wrong. Tell me why you think I've done well. And I've picked a game that you agree with. And you think is... Like the right position where it should be. Um, then go and ring the notification bell. Because... You know, I might do other tier lists like this. I might do characters next. Or I might do different game series altogether, like Final Fantasy or something like that. Like if other peop if people are interested in that sort of thing. Um but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I shall catch you guys next time. Have a good day, have a good afternoon, a good evening or a good night. And I shall catch you guys again soon. Goodbye.